Hello everyone, it's Robin the Artsy Bohemian coming to you from my studio in Los Angeles, California. So today we are going to be binding the book that I started, I can't believe it's been seven months, it began, we began in the beginning of the pandemic and I had taught many, had many, many tutorials on all the different techniques for the pages, the file folder pages that we did so I will put links down below and um, if you want to catch up now those of you who have who had started this we will be doing a binding technique that I'm going to be experimenting with so my suggestion is I'm going to show you um, what I do to punch the holes I already started it I just I didn't want you to sit through me punching holes the whole time um, and then I'm going to experiment with a binding technique that I have in my head. And then I, I will go through afterwards and we'll go through all the pages just to refresh your memory. And for those of you who are new, um, who haven't seen this at all, this is your first time here. So welcome. Uh, make sure to subscribe and like uh, the video and also sign up for all of the no notifications so that you can have, um, access to my bohemian inspiration and tutorials every Tuesday. Also, this is the other one that I had started and um, put this down for a sec here. Again, I was experimenting with some fabric. Um, this is probably going to be a technique that I'll be teaching in a, a class probably within the next few months and it'll be um, making your own book cloth. This is, again, be unconventional, somewhat conventional, but um, somewhat unconventional. So I'll just jog your memory. This is the other ledger that we turned into a larger um, uh, book cover. And I, uh, like I said, I do have tutorials on how to do this. So this is still in the beginning stages. <clears throat> I found this amazing fabric at a, a flea market and she had several yards of it. So I love it. I just love these colors. And what I did was I cut it into different pieces and then patchworked it with some old laces and fabrics. And I'm probably going to do that a little bit more. My inspiration for this is someone who I've been following for years and years. She doesn't really have an online presence. I believe she just started Instagram recently, but her name's DJ Pettit. Some of you may know who she is. She has, if you've ever seen some of some beautiful fabric and hand painted journals on Pinterest, it's most likely one of hers. Not that there's not, she's the only one, but there's lots of amazing journal artists and she's one of them that I love. I just, I just think she's a genius um, when it comes to making journals. And she started doing all this, you know, in the late to mid 2000s. So anyway, so that's going to be this. Um, I will probably show you when it's done. And um, also I wanted to show you what I've been playing with because I um, just kind of, I go through these periods of time where I like to paint so I used ephemera, like old, old envelopes. Some of you who have followed me for a little bit know that I like to paint on envelopes. These are usually pretty old. So I just started playing around with colorful flowers and India ink and kind of messy drawing. And I'll be adding this probably to my, my uh, one of the journal that I'm putting together. And <clears throat> I just want to know if you are interested in me showing you this technique, I'll be happy to do it. It doesn't take a lot of supplies and um, more than likely you probably have the materials that you need at home. This is also junk mail. So I had talked to um, a couple videos ago about using junk mail for your journals and making these flip outs. So this is ha literally how it came and I was excited. Of course, I didn't care about what was on it. I just was thinking about how I could alter it. So that's another thing I've been doing and I thought it would be kind of fun to do a flip like this with um, these colorful pieces. And 
I've been noticing some artists, Ray Missig Missigman, I believe that's how you say her name. Um, another really sweet artist that I just found her website is artjunk.com. I believe her name is Cindy and, um, a few others. Oh, um, Robin Marie Smith. They do these really beautiful, brightly colored paintings. And I noticed that they've been making their own, um, little fussy cuts. And so I thought I would get, try my hand at it. So this, this could be another thing if you're interested in, in making your own fussy cuts. You don't know how to be a painter as long as you can, you know, hold a paintbrush and a pen. I think I can show you how to do some very rudimentary painting techniques and um, you could make your own fussy cuts. I think these would be fun to add to, you know, your artwork. You could just, just like you would do any of your fussy cuts. So um, let me know if, in the comments below if that would be something of interest to you. And I think that's it for my show and tell um, what's on my desk. So we'll proceed with the binding of the journal. Like I said, I started it and I didn't want to bore you with me poking holes in it. It's probably one of the more mundane and boring tasks for me anyway. Um, that's probably why I wait so long, why I just keep making pages and pages and pages um, to poke holes in the, the, the spine and in all the pages. <clears throat> so this is a pretty big journal. And what I did was I made a template out of just like a cracker or a cereal box. The measurements aren't going to matter because your your book is going to be different than mine. So you, you want to make sure it's the length and then just the width of your binding where it bends. That's what you're going to be doing. And what I did because I have three signatures, it's probably easier to measure when you have odd numbers because you can find the center. So the way I found the center was I just folded it in half and then I measured from the top to the center, kind of, actually, I think I just eyeballed it. And then I proceeded to make holes or marks where the holes would be. And then I punched them. So there's three holes across and five holes lengthwise. Then I took my, um, I took the template and I drew where each hole was so that I knew there, where the mark was. And I took my Japanese hole punch. If you don't have a Japanese hole punch, you could all, um, use an awl or even a really fat needle. It's just a little easier to use an awl or a Japanese hole punch. Those of you who've never seen this, I'm going to show you how to do one set up here. And then for the the um, pages, I already started these two. I'm kind of I'm holding them in place. So I punched all the holes in this by just setting this down and then marking it with my pen and then punching the holes with my Japanese hole punch. I did both of these already. So what you'll need is something underneath your uh, book before you punch the holes. Use an old magazine or a, a large stack of junk mail or um, a phone book like I have. I have one that is old and has tons of holes in it. I hope you all are doing well. I am doing well. It's been kind of hot here where I live because um, it is summertime, but we've been pretty lucky it hasn't been that hot this summer. So I'm going to just very carefully find the, the mark that I put here and have to do this a couple times. And the way this works is it has a screw on it. So when you push down, it screws forward and then screws backwards. And then you have your excess. So if it doesn't 
go all the way through just keep doing it and there you go and the Japanese hole punch now this is going through fabric so I'm gonna have to do it a couple more times oh no there it is right there it's the fabric and the lace that I had it going through um, you can find these now on Amazon when I first started I paid a ridiculous amount for this I think it was $50 and then they have different tips you can buy with different size holes I have no idea what this one is it's probably an eighth of an inch so the same thing on this side even if you're if you have a screw driver I mean a, a you know electric screwdriver or drill excuse me you could use that probably too because this is pretty heavy duty uh, chipboard that I used on this so very very sturdy um, these of course were original but then I made my own from chipboard for the center because I expanded this and like I said there's a um, tutorial on how I made this um, and I'll put that down below. There's a whole series actually of tutorials for this whole thing. And uh, I do teach junk journals. Um, and one of my most popular classes in my online school is learning how to make a junk journal. But nothing I show you on YouTube is in that class. It's, com it's completely different. So um, if you're interested in taking a class with me, I'll have the link down below. I just have to put that back in there. this a little bit more and we'll be done with this one okay there's all three of them in there so now I have five sets of three didn't do so I will show you what I did it's always good to have some clips around so that you can hold everything in place when you um, draw the holes not too bad because these signatures even though they're chunky there's not a lot of them so it's not that hard and um, do this. I'm just gonna poke holes draw holes first in the center of these just make sure So then what you can do is take your new, your um, book, whatever you're going to be punching on, and then put this in the crease so that it kind of holds it in place.
now the experimenting begins. First, you're gonna need some kind of cord to bind everything. I use this synthetic nylon cord. I love it. I use it for my jewelry making as well. And it's waxed, so um, it's it, it holds its shape. It's not waxed linen. This is a little bit more durable from what I've heard anyway from the person that sells this. <clears throat> Waxed linen is, is a natural fiber, and it's a wonderful um, cord to use as well. Um, I just don't know how long it will last. This is nylon, and it lasts quite a long time. So I'm going to do quite a bit of this. Uh, I'm going to, because I'm hoping I can get away with one go through, so... I'm going to do one, two, three lengths, and then I think I'm going to triple that. So probably three yards, maybe, you know, three arms lengths. It's not the end of the world if you don't have enough, but... And get a blunt needle, like a tapestry needle, with a large eye, and then thread it. Okay, let's let's go for this. And like I said, don't do this until I'm done. I'm not sure if it's going to work. Okay, so my thought is I would go... Let's see how I was going to do this. So I'm going to go through here first from the outside. That means I'll do the first signature. I'm gonna find the halfway mark here on my thread. And let's see, I think I want this one to be the first one. So I have all these pages kind of held in place with the pins, the closed pins. second one from the middle and then the second one on the outside so my thought is I would take it and crisscross it over here to this one. I'm going to do a crisscross here and then there's going to be one down the center at some point probably. And then I want to like maybe sew buttons in the center but like I said I'm not exactly sure if that's going to work. So we'll see. So this is all going to be loosey-goosey until I figure out whether this is even going to work or not. So now what I'm going to do is take the last signature, which I think is going to be this one. This is the first signature, this is the third signature. I have one in the center that I haven't used yet. And I went through the top, and I go through the second one here, the second hole, through the second hole of the binding. And 
and up through the top here. So I'm going to have this cross like that. This is live, you guys. We're doing this together. So now I gotta find the hole. It is right there. Okay, now I'm gonna look at this and figure out what to do next. So I'm going to take it back through probably all the way down to this one. Or I actually might, let's see here, I think I was going to take this and like sew it through this. I'm going to leave this here for right now. Yeah. And I'm gonna make, take the needle and work with the second part here. So now I'm going to, let's see, I think I'm gonna put this in here. So this is the center signature which I don't have in here yet but I will add now and this is the one that we just poked holes in something okay so now I think what I'll do is I'll go do a crisscross down here I think no I can't do that I have this crisscross here I'm going to have to connect all these anyway, so let's see if this will work. Okay, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing, but I'm telling you, I don't know if this is going to work. So just wait and see if it's going to work. So now I'm going to, I put it, I put, this is the center signature. And I went through the center hole and I'm going through the second hole on the bottom. Through the binding on the outside and here I am right here. And then I'm going to do this because eventually I'm going to have to do this anyway. to connect to the center. And I'm gonna go back through the second hole. Try not to pierce the thread. center hole here.
So I'm just kind of doing a regular binding on this centerpiece one first, it looks like. Pulling out through here. Who knows, I might have to undo all of this. I don't know, I just didn't want it to look normal, so that's what happens when you experiment. And now I can't find the hole. Where is it? I know I've seen something like this done before. I just never knew how they did it, so I'm just kind of winging it. So I'm at this point now. You can see everything's still kind of loose, all the bindings loose, the cord, but um, it'll tighten up in a sec here. going to go in the center. Okay, so the center signature is in there. Everything I made, I'm, I'm not tightening anything up just yet. Um, because I don't know if this will work, like I said. But I'm kind of liking the way it's coming out. I think it'll work. And then I want to put decorations here on the points that intersect. So I'm liking that so far. And if it does work, then you can just rewind back to where I started. <laughs> Tightening some of these up now here. Okay, so I tightened everything up. I didn't think you should have to watch all that, but basically that part worked. It's in the center. Um, I still have half of the cord here. So in order for me to repeat this crisscross here, I'm going to have to use this cord and it's going to go all the way down to this hole, the second hole from the bottom to make the crisscross again. And then I'll figure out how I'm going to get back up here and uh, make this little section. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the needle off this cord and just leave this alone. This is the center um, signature and it's pretty much in there. So the first signature I'm going to take the cord and I'm going to draw it all the way down here. Everything's getting tighter, and this is still kind of loose in the center, but that's because I haven't. So everything kind of looks like this now. And I tightened it all up, except for this one, that's the center one. I'm going to cross this over, and then through here. 
So this is going to cross all the way over to the third signature. And So this is the third signature, and I'm going through the second hole on the top, and the second hole on the top on the binding, and then crisscross over here. I'm going to tighten this up a little bit. It's looking cute. I like it. This is going to go here. So these are not typical signatures. It's they're all made from biofolders. Trying to find the hole here. So this binds the front and the back, the, the first and the third signatures, not in the center. So I'm going to figure out that now. Just tighten this up. So I'm on the first signature. If I go like this. I think I'll go all the way up to this one in the middle. this way, binding the third one. I'm not sure if that's going to the third one or not. all these clips off because everything's pretty much in there now and this is the fun part doing the binding is not so much fun so I like the way that came out we're just gonna make sure everything is secure before I tie it off I think I should go through that one up here. Now, the thing is, is the second one, the signature in the middle has a really long cord, so I need to tie it off at some point and make sure that this, I'm going to have to tie them all off, but um, it'd be nice to have them all meet in one area, so I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I figured out um, what I'm going to do. <laughs> so the center signature is the one that you can't do much on because it, uh, it's too complicated, but basically this one has a really long cord still. So my goal is to get the cord from the third signature to the center signature. So what I'm going to do, or vice versa, what was I gonna do? I just had it figured out. Oh, I know what I was gonna do. <clears throat> I'm gonna run the center signature cord through the top hole, and that's gonna be bring me to the center hole on the outside. I'm gonna run it through um, and because there's lace here, I can probably cover it up um, through this hole, and that'll bring me to the third signature. So I'm gonna show. I'll show you. And it's, you know, not probably not the best way, but everything's secure. Nothing's gonna fall out. Nothing was ripped or torn, and it looks still looks pretty on the outside. So I'm okay with that. So I'm gonna take and run this through the top. Hopefully it'll just go right through. So fiddly here. Okay, there's the needle. Now I'm trying to find the hole. Got it through. Sorry, I live by a train and I can't help the timing, so. There's always a train, plus I have my fan on because it's super hot in here, so I'm gonna turn that off. So it's up through the center and I'm pulling it tight. You just have to, those of you who've made journals know that you can't pull too tight because you don't want anything to rip. But I've been kind of testing how tight it is by doing this on the outside and everything seems to be somewhat tight. So that's the great thing about this <clears throat> cord too. It, um, it's really strong. And now I'm going to run the last bit whew, through here. I'm going to do it kind of underneath. Yay, it went through the hole. And then that way I can tie these together right here. So everything flips really nice and nothing's going to fall apart. I hope. This one's kind of loose so I think that'll tighten up once I Pull the cord. Yep. Just gonna double check one more time, make sure everything's tight. Just um, put some little dangles on there. So it's good that I had enough cord. I did about three yards and that seemed to work. Even though I did a lot of fancy work there. 
Okay, so cute. So we'll go through um, the pages and then I'll just add a couple. I think I'm going to do some buttons here maybe. Might sew them on. And gosh, it came out cute. I really like it. Alright, so <clears throat> this is the first one. This is the, I think this was one of the first um, techniques I showed you. I'm making this cute flip out. This is a um, a digital from my porch prints, and it looks like it's kind of crooked. Um, with these cute pockets here, little journaling cards, and I just added some ephemera in here, and some lace trim. Added a Tim Holtz tag on top, and these all open up here on the sides. So that's fun. Lots of lace as you can see. And this is a little pocket made from a bag and there's tags in here. These aren't decorated yet. I'm gonna paint on them I think. So I already cut the edges. They're just envelopes that I um, bound together and then um, cut the, the tops and I'm going to paint on them and add some cardstock. So those will be ready to play with. And this opens here. And this was another um, pocket or page I showed you how to make with all the layering. There's lots of pockets in this one, I believe. Yeah, there's a pocket there. And there and there's three four so there's four pockets lots of layering cute I oh, yeah, so this was a really popular post this cascading uh, envelope page so like I said you can go back and look at um, the tutorials if you're new this is the first time you're coming to my channel showed you how to make that and by the way because these are all um, file folders they all they have these pockets in them so you can stuff your goodies in here and all of these here and then this is another page um, I, that I think we did with the fabric on it and um, this was so sweet this was a gal who had sent me this fabric because I couldn't find it anymore and she had found it at her local Joann's so she gifted it to me and she sent the most adorable card isn't that cute so um, her name's Marsha thank you Marsha I know I had already sent you a, um, a thank you but um, I haven't been able to do it publicly here on YouTube and I thought I would incorporate that into the journal since it's so pretty these are some little pockets that I made with coin envelopes and Tim Holtz ephemera. It's a little painting I did. And this is from an old book that I made the pocket from. So I'll just be sticking those in here. Something stuck and I just tore it. So I'm going to have to fix that. And then these are all blank so I can add to them and paint on them. watercolor paper, copy dyed paper. This was another tutorial I showed you how to do kind of a take on an old um, style of a card. Not old like antique but I guess people have been doing these for a while but this is my take on it. It opens out like that and then I can put pockets in there. I made a little booklet. This is from My Porch Prints, this graphic, super pretty. So I made a little booklet with that. And a little belly band that slides in here. And then some journaling cards, which are also from My Porch Prints. 
So again, this is on um, the uh, down below. There'll be a description of all the tutorials, and they span um, from the beginning of the pandemic in March. Can't believe it's been seven months. And this is a transfer technique I showed you how to do. And I think, do I have anything in here? That's also open. And then this is the last signature, and this was also a really popular post. It's um, It wasn't my idea. I had put the name of the person who I got the idea from down below in the tutorial. Um, but this is a, like a mini envelope. I don't remember what I called it. But there's lots of envelopes here that open up and attach to each other. And so in every envelope, you can put something. So I have a little notepad here. And I just did layers of collage and lace. And this is an old envelope. This is one of my paintings that I had video, I mean copied, uh, did a photocopy of. Another little tablet to write on. And a pocket. Here's another pocket. This was a lot of fun to make. So if you guys like these multi-series tutorials, let me know. And if you want to learn how to do the paintings that I did on those envelopes, let me know. So yeah, these are really fun. Um, they, I like how there's many layers. And it closes like this. I think it was called, I think she called it stacked envelope. Um, and then uh, this is the inside. So this is just a, a, I did all the stacked envelopes on the file folder and the file folder was folded in half like that, like, <laughs> like that. And then I added these pages that I had painted and these, there's also a tutorial. And these, um, I give you, uh, if you want, there's a download for this angel, just the, the, the base of it and I kind of show you how to paint it. Here's another lady that I did. And so there's more space for me to play with and all of these have pockets in them. So I can just add any paintings or things that I do inside of there like these. So I could put this in here if I wanted to. I could even add it to the side like that. And I have an automatic, another flip. And then these would be kind of fun. You could put your little fussy cuts that you've made. I think I'll do that. I like those. In fact, I'll do that right now. So thanks, you guys, for watching and supporting me. I appreciate it. I'm in the middle of making a another class, an online class. I'm not sure any of you would be interested in it, but um, it's a soldering class. And I'll have all the information on that hopefully next week. And as always, I'll have incentives and bonuses and um, early bird pricing and all that stuff. I didn't get a chance to make more of the Halloween Shabby Chic Fall kits. Um, I just just really trying to focus on my class. So, so that's cute. I need to get new glue. I had to water this down and it's not the best. I just go through glue so quickly now. So yeah, I think that would be cute to, um, I show you how to make your own little fussy cut flowers, little bunches of flowers, little bouquets. All right, you guys, make sure to subscribe and um, thank you again for always watching and leaving such sweet comments. I really appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed that. Oops. I will show you. I'm going to come back and show you. Um, I'm not done yet. I'm going to put the buttons on there. I'll be right back. Okay, so I sewed one button on. I like it. It's super cute. Um, so I thought I'd show you how to do it in case you wanted to know. It's not hard. Um, yeah, I have a tendency to overdo 
spines usually like putting dangles and stuff but I kind of wanted this to be pretty um, simple on the outside because it's going to be a working journal so I don't want a bunch of stuff in my way so these are tiny enough and cute so they won't really get in the way and they still add a cute little touch so what you're going to need is your needle and thread usually try to get a th uh, thread that's kind of maybe quilt grade um, if not um, that's okay you can double it up so double up your thread and go through underneath where all the cords intersect and then go between the two pieces of thread and then it'll tie it down and then sew on your button that's all you do these are mother of pearl old mother of pearl buttons which I'm always on the lookout for I have a ton because I use them in my kits and I just love them but I usually find them at flea markets And there's such an interesting story about mother of pearl buttons. They're from, some of them are from the Mississippi River in the United States. And then somewhere in the Midwest, it was a huge industry um, from freshwater mother of pearl, I guess. So I'm just going to do that a couple times and then I'm going to tie it off. And then I might put one here too. I, I have had this for a long time. I'm not really sure what it was for. I Yeah, it's two buttons on a piece of fabric, but I like how old it looks. So I might put that there. So I'm going to go through here one more time. And then I'm going to tie it off like you would a shank button. So kind of tie it tight, pull it tight. And then you're going to wrap the cord around the bottom of the button a couple times, pull it. And then go like this to, to, to tie a knot. I'm going to do it twice. Like that. Okay, now we're done. And I'm not sure if I'm going to put that on there, but I might. So we'll see. Hope you enjoyed that. I will see you next Tuesday in the next video.